The first was on uh, resin as uh, using it, the online cloud version. Second was about the reproduction, uh, reproducibility. And this one, we are going to uh, show how we are tackling reproducibility with, with resin. So my name is uh, Pablo Reyes. I'm uh, working from home. I hope everybody is staying safe. And here is the, the members of the NGO team that developed this uh, solution for reproducibility. Not Valentic, Asti, Bat, which is the PI of the resin NGO. Leslie Lamarche, uh, myself, and uh, Ashton Reimer. And so what we, so I just mentioned again, reproduci reproducibility, we are uh, finding a solution. We are offering a solution with containers, uh, specifically using Docker. But we made all this transparent with uh, develop of a tool called reproducible uh, software um, environment called Resin. And um, so we want reproducibility. Many things can change the, the operating system. When you want to reproduce something, the libraries, the compiler, the, the the Python version, packages, your workflow, even the data can change. So, but if you put everything, you encapsulate that in an environment, then you should be able to reproduce that in the future, even if the things that were there when you compiled it are not longer there. But in, since everything is in a package, what we are going to call it a, a, a bucket, then you should be able to reproduce your results to have the same uh, data that you use, your uh, workflow, meaning your notebook, where you have all the steps that you follow to fetch the data, to make your plots, all of that is available. So, and it's based on, so this packet is based on, on the, Docker images that we are calling resin core. Right now you saw when you install the software, the available is the 2019.1.0 version. We were um, expecting to, we were planning to release every six months, probably a new version way, uh, based on the input from, from the users, on the community. When uh, we can update packages or we want to have more, uh, packages uh, installed in them or some tools and that will be very useful to to have and by the way if you have any questions right now please feel free to put it in the in the chat version in, in the chat uh, section so that uh, our uh, members of the team can ha ha uh, can answer your questions so docker uh, and also uh, uh, something else nice about having uh, this reproducible uh, environment is that we are using open source so so that uh, there's no problems of uh, using proprietary software that will need license from anybody so anybody that has this image can reproduce it in whatever you can install docker that's so Do docker is our uh, solution that we are uh, relying on um so and the workflow is so you you decide on a on a on a resin core you put your data and i will show you this uh i will show you this with, with a terminal how to do that but i just want to, to, to let you know what i'm talking about and seeing this graph put, put uh, together by todd valentic in agu 2019 is, is very helpful but, once uh, you have your bucket with the resin tool, you we start that bucket, and you will have the same environment that you were playing already with the online tool, and you have been playing with the on or you have, you have been working on with your in your systems. Once you are happy with the result, you export that bucket with all the figures that you make for your maybe for your presentation, maybe for your. Uh, publication, your manuscript. So you and the exporting creates a tar file that you can upload to Zenodo that will provide you with a 
uh, DOI that you can use to, to cite in your publication. And then you share that and you will be able to import the packet into this, into your, uh, into your system and reproduce the results. So before going to, to, to the, uh, to show you how to do this with, in the terminal, I want to point out, I will be using many of the links that I'm used are starting from this, the NGO webpage. I should be able to, to put that in, in the chat. Just if you want to go on and, and get that. We have used, there is a, so we put in practice reproducibility and in a publication, the full article is here, but it's open access. So from the DOI, uh, you can you can access it. It's it's in the journal for uh, the journal of space weather and space climate. The full PDF uh, is, is accessible there, where we explain about resin, the reproducible software environment and uh, the resin tool, the commands, there's this nice uh, graphic there, again, talking about the bucket, the solution that we are uh, proposing. Each project that you're working on could be in, in a bucket and then you share that bucket or you put in a repository. In this paper, by the end, uh, the case, it, it, uh, it put a case study where all this data, it's, it's a TID that was crossing uh, the, the North American uh, sector from November 7, 2015, where we have uh, data from uh, Mango uh, network, Fabri Pero interferometers, Superdan, TEC, and the data and the workflow and, and the code made, uh, that was used to, the, to create these figures was published on Zunodo. I can open here which is, is, a, is, is a nice uh, place. It's a repository that will allow you, I believe up to 50 gigabytes of, of, of space for putting, in this case, uh, it was a tar file that, that, was, that is 3.1 gigabytes. You can download this and with uh, the resin tool, you will be able to import this and reproduce the same results. So now uh, I will go ahead and start uh, to use uh, resin. Uh, but before, well, I will start again from EGEO web uh, page. And if you go to resin, resin locally, you have links on uh, specifically to the uh, read the docs page, which tells you, please follow these instructions for your specific system that you have installations, uh, there are general instructions there. Uh, Ashton Reimer uh, did a, a, a great uh, help here to, with Windows. There, there, there might be some, some challenges here that he addressed. And um, Python and Docker and how to install resin just with this uh, command. And something I, okay, so I will go ahead and install because I want to really recommend people to use a, Python environment to do that. So I have resin right now installed here, but I will, so we, that's a very simple command. And I installed recently this week 3.8 version of Python. And if you call the module virtual environments and I will put them somewhere in my system, that will create a, Python environment, and I will source it. I can, uh, binary is activate. So now in, I'm in that uh, environment with, I, I only have pip and setup tools. Maybe I want to upgrade that. And this falls into the best practices when, when you are uh, testing some uh, new software. 
probably that will solve any problems that, that you might have had. So I only have uh, Python right now, and it's Python 3. That's one of the requirements. The other requirement is Docker. So I have here the Docker 19.3.8. Something else that you can see is if you have Docker already running in your system, you have uh, some, some commands that you can follow. Uh, you can see the resources that that is using. Something I recommended at the beginning is that you be able to uh, be sure that you have enough resources, uh, specifically space available in your system before uh, you use Docker some uh, CPU power and memory. So we, we, so I have everything, all the requirements, so I would just go ahead and install this. This command essentially goes to the GitHub repository, which uh, you can, GitHub repository where you can get all this, is, is going to, Actually, to this resin here. So that's a GitHub repository which holds this, this tool. Now it's installed. And we can, just by tapping it, uh, typing resin, we have the environment there. So what we do next, uh, or we, we type help, we give us a list of uh, the commands that we can use. And um, so one of those is, uh, you can type help and maybe uh, create, for instance, one of the things we can create a bucket. And the user is just put create and it will be prompts uh, to ask you questions about how to create a bucket. So, so let's do that. So we, uh, we are going to create a, a, a bucket, a very simple bucket. Uh, we are calling it uh, maybe uh, webinar. And you asked to put a version of Resin Core, and uh, this is what I was mentioning before. Uh, we have uh, some version, and it's 2019.1.0. So let's type that in. And it's asking you now if you want to mount some storage. And uh, yes, so that that will that's where you can put your uh, your data. That you already downloaded before. Um, uh, let's just put yes. You enter a local path. So let me just. Well, if I created just a very simple, so it's just copying and, and pasting the lo the local path that you want to get access to in the resin environment. Enter the bucket path. It it needs to start with uh, this but this is how you're going to find it once you're uh, inside the resin but if you if you put something else the, the system will yell at you and say okay you have to start with this and not even that that you have to put a name to, to whatever let's call it external inside inside your bucket and read only or read write permissions I will put read write and mount additional storage right now no and start a bucket and a Jupyter lab. Yes. So that I already have downloaded, of course, my uh, I already have the resin core in my system. So but if you run this for the first time, and I wanted to I will I will show you this later, it will start downloading uh, the image that you need. So very simple, you created this, the mount that you have is there with external that I uh, specified a couple of files there. You have your work directory where you can start a, maybe a, a Jupyter notebook, Jupyter notebook, and you can rename it. You can try to do some, hit enter to execute. You have been playing uh, uh, with this thing. We have, you have been working with this before. So it just, it makes a plot something you can do you do you do your analysis you save this and once you are done with this you can close and shut down your notebook and um, 
let's see, can get out of here. And now what we want, so we created some analysis, fabulous results that you want to publish. So you want to export that. So help give me the list of commands that I want to export. So how to use that is export bucket name. Uh, I didn't mention all the lists uh, of the commands that are very simple. They are like a couple exit and quit to, to, to get out of this environment. Let's clear this. Um, another command is list will tells me will tell me the the buckets uh, the right uh, that we have right now i have the case study that i show you before uh from the paper i have uh you can remove a bucket start stop a bucket i can export and import bucket so we created this webinar and i'm going to show you how to export it. You put help export, or you put export and the name of your bucket. That uh, asks you for uh, for a name. Mm, I believe I I will put it somewhere in, in here. Uh, so. I will call it I will call it the same webinar dot tar. Enter the name for okay. I may I didn't copy the first slash. So so I put up a path to where the tar file will be generated. Now it's asked for a name and a tag. And this is related on how Docker works. If if you do uh, issue the Docker command, Docker images, they're arranged like it, it, it have a name and a tag. So is that is related to that? Is how to manage and classify the Docker images. Would you like to to change the name? No, just just use that. Would you like to include all of the exported packets? So yes. So whatever you mount it, it will ask you to, to export, to include in the bucket or not. Of course, you want to include your data to achieve complete reproducibility, but uh, you might not want to include, for instance, your terabyte mount that you want, that you are uh, using to test, that you mount it in your, back, in, in your uh, resin um, tool, uh, but you don't want to include that in a tar file because you, I don't know, there is the issue of where you put all that terabytes long uh, bucket if you create one of those. Are you sure you want to continue? Then it tells you more or less the, the amount of uh, space that you're going to use and you put yes. So this will now start to, to, to use my computer and ensure my, my vents, uh, my, uh, the fan will, will start uh, increasing in speed and my computer will start uh, using its resources. So that will take some time. In the meantime, so I will show you that you can put, so I have put also the resin in, an, in another system. Uh, where, okay, so I have installed resin here, and if I create a bucket, uh, will not mount anything, but the first time you load it, what you will see is that it is pulling the image from, from Docker Hub. So this is the first time you run your, uh, you create a bucket from a specific version, it needs to 
download and it will take about five minutes probably to or two minutes i don't know it depends on your connection and your system what this is going what, what this is doing is going to where the docker images are the docker images are right now residing on uh, docker hub and this is the one that is being downloaded right now that is term in docker commands is pulling it is pulling the image from this docker uh, from the docker hub you right now this recent tool is using only is showing only the 2019.1.0 we have hard coded that but if you notice in the paper and we are referencing here resin uh, we are citing the resin tool that we have uh yeah we have we are citing resin and resin core this was based on 2019.1.0 release candidate 2. so this paper was done with this image here so it's important to notice and it's important to to show how this this thing should be uh cited references when, whenever you, you use it of course here is references to the jupiter how to reference uh jupiter uh the project and many other uh david pi pi sad whatever we was used to to create this uh this image and this paper so, all right so let's go back to so my computer is still working on exporting a very simple image that I created. And in this other computer, I am showing that it takes some time to, no, it's, it's done now. So this is how, uh, so, so th this is when, when the first, so I create a bucket here now. Something else that I will show you is uh, how to import a bucket. So I previously, downloaded here the case study .tar that I was showing you before from the from this uh, the, the paper and the case study the way to to import it is you start from resin and you it would help import and the way you do is you just put import and it will ask you for Enter a bucket name. When you import, so even though it's the case study was a bucket, when you're importing it in your system, it will it will create another bucket. So let's call it review. Review case study. So you want to reproduce that. And then the input file. So I believe it was home Pablo. Uh, is study .tar. Would you like to keep the default name and tag? Yes. Would you like to specify? And so it that that will bring that will enter things in a place, and it's it's chosen resin and the name of the bucket. Would you like to specify? And uh, uh, no, that's fine. I would put no. Additional storage, you could. So, if you create this study and then you decide, okay, now I want to apply this to a larger data set, so you can add additional storage here, but uh, storage. I will, take, I will put no. Uh, this will remove. So, once it's created, I mean, this we're talking about space, three gigabytes, and it, it, it might be uh, trivial, uh, not too much for your system, but you might want to remove that once uh, the tar file once you create this i would put no i don't want to remove uh start the bucket um so i put not start but just import it so if i put no it will start also so that that will take some time also all right so this is how you import the bucket in my system i already have importing it and my I, I see that my computer already finished exporting the bucket I can check that 
that took like 1.8 gigabytes of course it's compressed in my system so so that's done it has been completed already let's do list and anytime it has uh so the webinar is there is running so if i say i want to start i want to always you guys that one of the commands is start and stop. So I can start and stop. I can start the webinar and it's, it will tell me, okay, it's already running there. And it gives you the URL. So you just copy and paste that on your browser of preference. And that's the, the bucket that we created previously. But I will, Okay, I will start also the case study, which was used in, in, in the publication. Since it was exited, the status before it was exited, so when I put start, it creates the URL and also it brings me to the, to the bucket here. So we can reproduce the steps in the case reproducibility is, is achieved also not only by having all the system encapsulated by also the steps that, that were uh, used for uh, achieving your results. In this case, uh, getting the data using, in this case, Madrigal Web for some of the data and you will be able to reproduce this. The data was mounted and put here in data where we see the Fabri Pro interferometers, Mango, Superdarn, Supermac, and TEC data. And all, all that will be accessed by later on our next workflow notebook, which is uh, the case study where we mount all the, we import all the packages that were used to create the images. Uh, we create uh, we can uh, rerun and obtain the same results for the image that was were put in the in the paper. So, yeah, that's so we have review how to create packets, how to import packets and and we have to talk about docker which is running under the hood all what this uh resin tool does is, is issue the, the commands that docker wants to manage their images and their containers um, make that all transparent you just see just we just download it from to Nodo, a tar file, and we uh, we were able to to import it. And uh, so, in, in this other system, I imported it as review case study, and then you can start that bucket, and it will. Of course, this is running uh, remotely, and well, my, my my system remotely tries to open Jupyter as a text. Uh, somehow, so I will shift Q here. So it's running. You can see the status of it. It's giving me a, a URL. And I can port forward that into my system and, and see that. So this is another, uh, so we can install Docker in a remote place, in a remote server where, where you might have your resources, your data. And so once you create that bucket, you could create SSH. So that's what I need to do to, to port forward the, the 9001 port running locally in the remote server 
and you do a power port power um, you uh, port your uh, so you forward port your uh, 2009 to 9020 I decided here uh, to use and now I have access to the bucket running in that server with, pro with probably more resources okay so I guess I have covered um, uh many many things uh related to how to start how to create export import start and stop a, a bucket and see the status so this is again back in my in my local machine so i can just to, to stop a bucket is just stop the number of uh, the name of the bucket and that will stop that so i guess i will open the floor to questions and uh of if and any other of members of the ngo team want to 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 talk uh something more about the recent tool uh, So, so as long as Docker exists in the future, we should be able to get these star files and reproduce whatever we we created. And it's and we choose. I mean, Docker is many people are using that already. They don't, they don't use need to use resin, or uh, you put in a, in a in a Docker file, which will contain everything. Is is the containerized solution for achieving reproducibility. And uh, we are um, uh, using facilitating with this recent tool the way to put together your data and your workflow. In, in talking about no, the the notebooks, is they are essentially telling you the steps that you follow. And hopefully, all, of course, you have to put some effort in uh, using best practices, documented, talk, uh, writing about. How, what did you follow? What did you do to, to create your results? And also encapsulated encapsulated in these uh, buckets, you will have also your errors or your mistakes there, which are important to reproduce later on. And you will say, oh, oh wait, so I'm reviewing this. And of course, I, I did these mistakes or these errors were also there, part of their reproducibility. And, and uh, something, and we ask uh, everybody to, to to test this, um, find any issues, or uh, again, there is the GitHub repository where you can raise raise issues or maybe contribute, like with a request, with a request to if you uh, have something great to contribute. 